The quality of your questions determines the quality of your life. Very famous quote by Tony Robbins, and if you've ever been to a personal development seminar, you will know that they really get you to question everything you have been doing with your life and what you want to do moving forward. So today's video, I'm gonna challenge you the same with your money and your investments. Here are five life-changing questions that if you answer them yourself, or perhaps with your loved ones, I do believe they will change the direction of how you use your money moving forward. So today, especially, if you do enjoy this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Also hit subscribe if you're brand new to this channel. And I will say as well, if you have noticed, we've got a little button that appears down below. It says join. We have a membership on this channel and once a month I'll be doing a members Q&A. You'll see it on the channel but only members can submit their questions. So do check out the join button if you fancy being part of my membership moving forward. Hi there, welcome back to the Mama Furfur channel. My name is Jennifer. Now these five questions are questions that I believe will allow you to really go into what's important to you with your money and also how you're designing life. I want you to live on your terms with your money. That's the whole point of this channel, showing you multiple ways that you can actually use money as a tool. So the first question I want to challenge you with is, what would you do if you could never retire? It's an honest question. If it meant that you were doing the job that you are doing right now, would you be happy when you maybe are 70 or 80 years old looking back? If you never had an option to retire, but you simply every day or every week were doing what you're doing right now or something that you do want to do, would that satisfy you? And I think often we get stuck in the mind frame, particularly when it comes to money, that we're in some way we're enslaved to it. We have a job and that is good enough. Well, to be honest, good enough is not good enough for your life. It's not good enough for anyone's life. And when I think about my own children's life, I don't want them to settle for just what society says they should do or just because they have a job that pays the bills. The same way my parents probably don't want me to settle in any way. And so I don't want that for you. And you have to really think about what are you doing with your daily life, daily habits, and do they add up to actually what will make you happy or the goals that you have in place? Now, right now we're in a very unusual circumstance. We are coming and we're still going through a global pandemic. That's really shaken a lot of people to the core. It's questioned everything that we thought was normal life. We were very used to, first of all, having jobs. And now obviously a lot of people have lost their jobs in the UK and abroad. So job security is definitely not there. So you maybe had to adapt. You've maybe had to go out and get something else. You maybe had to think about having benefits into your household simply to survive while we got through it. And because that foundation has been rocked, sometimes these can actually be the greatest blessings. The thing you were doing, do you actually want to return to it? Or is there an opportunity that you can start afresh? And as scary as that might be, what would you never want to retire from? Is it that musical instrument that you keep picking up that you think one day it'd be so cool to teach other people? Is it actually you'd love to pick up a camera and share your journey on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok? There's going to be something within you that is what your purpose is for, that's really going to set you alight. And I will say, you don't need to make a decision about what's good for the rest of your life. What would feel good for the next five years? or next two years. And here's the great thing about us right now. We're in a generation, even my generation growing up in the 80s and 90s, we have unlimited possibilities. You know, I can remember using dial-up modems when I was doing my higher education, my standard grades and hires up here. So you had to log on, you got like an hour of time on the internet and that was it before you got charged. Nowadays, we have the internet, we can communicate and you can start a business from home. This pandemic has actually been almost at the right time because we've had resources in place that we could keep working. I know I have. I've been able to do my day job and also do this without going outside, without going to an office. So I want to inspire you. What you're doing right now in terms of earning money or anything in your life, would this be good enough for you in the years ahead if this was all there was? And if the answer to that question is deep down no, then I'm going to give you something that I want to challenge you with as something that you can go away and do now as a result. I want you to get a bit of paper and write down, brainstorm when you've got some quiet time, 25 things that might feel good that you could do and somebody would pay you for. So for example, if you fancy writing down teaching a language, if you've got that skill set, write it down. If you'd like to make YouTube videos, if you'd like to 
perhaps, you know, do dog walking or painting or perhaps, you know, be a postman. Whatever you want, write down 25 things. Brainstorm, get excited about this process. Then once you have that, I want you to look at maybe one or two that jump out that really are something that you think you could start doing right away or finding out about. And then your task is to do that. Make some inquiries, go on to Google, the power of the internet, and find out what it would take to actually do that job. Because here's the thing, you don't need to give up your day job, you don't need to give up what you're doing right now, but you can certainly start the process. I started this YouTube channel three years ago nearly, and right now, in those short years, it's taken from just being a side hustle, a little passive thing that wasn't making any money, but I loved it, to something that actually I hope that I'm giving a lot of value and talent, and also it's rewarding our family that we can then do more things and share content and help more people with. So I really want you to explore this. What is the one thing that you believe you would want to do if you knew you never had to retire from it? So the second question is, how much of your money do you actually need to keep? That is a very different question than a lot of people are teaching you on finance channels. I see it very common, the glamorization of, let's say, the FIRE movement is one money concept out there. So FIRE is financial independence, retire early. And the whole community, although not bad in what they're teaching, they're teaching people that ultimately you have to save up a large portion of investments before you can either drop your day job or perhaps not even work at all. And I say glamorized because it's a great concept, I get the maths behind it, I teach the maths here on this channel, but I think it's a miss placed concept and it does lead to a lot of people being disappointed because often when we're going for one goal that we think is how much of my money can I save, can I invest, a totally different question, we focus on that being the most important thing. And so when you've got that one goal, you're sacrificing everything else so that you can have the biggest saving or investing pot. Well, there's a lot of life to be lived, perhaps in those 20, 30 years it'll take you to get there. Are you meant to have this dead time where you're not meant to do anything with your life? I totally do not believe that. And that's why this question about how much of your money do you need to keep is really key. And what we do to answer this question, it all goes back to your budget. So when you have a budget, so as a plan for what comes into your household, you will know actually the needs that are required for your life. Now I'm talking about here your mortgage, your rent, keeping the lights on, food in your belly, maybe a little bit of transport, a little bit of fun. So the essentials only. Anything on top, I call that overflow. And that means that, that should be used to really bless your life. It should be used for your goals, for also doing good in the world. I believe in the circulation of money and then also creating time freedom. So you see, there's a number of different things that we should be doing once we've addressed that first question. How much of my money do I need to truly keep and then everything else that overflow is then for lifestyle design. Now if I told you that money was unlimited would you believe me? I want you to think about the money concept with this question as well. If you were to lose your job could you create more money in your life? Well, the fact is how the government works and society works with paper money as we know it is they can print and distribute as much as they like. We know this. When we hit depressions, what they tend to do is pump more money into the system to encourage you to spend. So money is completely unlimited. And with that, how you choose to create money in your life is also unlimited. If you've been stuck in the mindset that I have a day job, that's my value, that's only one way to get money. And you know on this channel we talk about having side hustles. I do that, for example. This is what YouTube is for me, a side hustle. And I share my knowledge, and then the amount of money I can get is unlimited. It's based on the value that I put into the marketplace. And you can do the same with your talents and services. So never believe that money is limited. It's completely unlimited. And it also mirrors your intentions with it. So when we're saying how much do I need to keep, I'm then saying what then do I want to do with the rest? And that's where you should have joy. You should be excited about using your money. It shouldn't be I need to lack and hoard this away because the hope of being free one day 20 or 30 years down the line. It does not work like that at all. It mirrors any fears, any anxieties and everything you feel about that resource. So for example, if you do feel that money is limited, that there's not enough, every day is a struggle, there's not enough to actually get enough in your household to do things you want, guess what happens? It then creates circumstances that back that up. 
up. Maybe you go into debt because you want the thing right now instead of waiting for it. Maybe it is that you don't get that degree, you don't move house, you don't go traveling because you think, well, there's never enough anyway, so why bother? And so remember, everything you do with your money should be based on what you want to keep and then what you want to do with the overflow. And equally as part of this question, if you weren't afraid of money running out, then what would you put in your spending habits? So the couple of great questions all off the back of what amount of money truly do you need to keep in your life? Third question for you, what are the habits that you are multiplying with your money? Okay, so this all goes down to actually our behavior and how we feel about ourselves. And money is just an amplifier of that. How you handle any resource, time, money, energy is driven by how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the outside world. And I really think of this as money amplifies the heart. There's a lot of old school wisdom out there, a lot of faiths that teach you whatever you feel in your heart, deep down, then you will use your resources and multiply that with. That's why we always say, you know, if you've got issues that you don't feel confident then the chances are you'll also use your money in a certain way perhaps you'll buy things to impress people or you might get out lots of debt because you think you should have the latest car you might want the latest holidays to look good on Instagram and that's just one example right and I know that's amplified but you get the point equally if you feel there's not enough money in the world that everything you know I'm going to keep hold of it nobody else can get any then you're going to really struggle with some of the habits that I mentioned that bless our life the habit of giving the habit of investing all these then change your mindset and you're going to be really stuck and not believing them and not wanting to try them so i would say what are some of the fundamental habits that your budget and your spending is showing look at how you've been spending your money the past two months three months past six months and take note of it look back what has your spending been like with your food budget or takeaways or sub subscriptions that you have that maybe you're not using? Why have you still got them? Or perhaps are you using your money to impress other people rather than do things that matter to you? Equally, if you have habits that matter such as your health, your well-being, are you using the money that you have in your life right now to do that and to amplify that? Because money, as I say over and over again, is just a tool. So look at the habits that you're currently using your money for and use the power of recognizing that to now change that moving forward. This leads us on to the fourth question. What is your finish line and purpose for your money. When I think about a finish line, I'm thinking about a goal or a journey as part of that. If we think about somebody running a race, and by no means I'm not a runner, but I do look up to people who run marathons and things like that, thinking it's an amazing achievement. And you'll know that then when they train for that marathon, they know it's not just setting foot that one step and then they're at the end. There's a whole journey of that marathon. And they're really working towards making sure they maintain everything that they know is going to allow them to get to the finish line. I want to ask you, what is the purpose for that goal that you have in mind with your money? So if you do believe in the FIRE movement or you want a particular goal such as I want to have investments, I want to leave my day job, what is the true feeling and purpose you want to create? And often when we look into these goals that we think actually about money are going to make us happy, it's because of the emotion that we're creating in our life. So if, for example, you have a very particular goal that you do want to hit a fine number, so that's 25 times your annual amount of money, usually investments, applying the 4% rule to then withdraw, you'll have this goal because you believe you'll then have freedom with your time. So it's not actually the amount of money that gives you security, it's what you believe you will feel as a result. And I'll really challenge you with this. Your finish line, your purpose for your money, is it truly your goal or is it somebody else's? So I often see that a lot of people will simply copy what somebody else has done. Now that's great if you want somebody who's been a mentor to you, you want their particular life, you really look up to them and know that they've done it in an ethical way or something you can fall back on and say, yes, I want to take those steps. That's great, that kind of cuts down the time of you learning. But just because somebody else did something a certain way doesn't mean you have to. And it also doesn't mean it's the only way. So when we're talking about perhaps leaving your day job, well, there's multiple ways that you can do that. The first of all, yes, you could save up a lot of investments. You could be, you know, fully committed to the fire movement. You could save, save, save as much as you can. In 10, 15 years, you could do just that. The other route is, of course, you could try and make money in different ways. We've talked about this many times. Can you sell your talents and services right now? So effectively, that one 
one stream of income from your day job you're then replacing can you actually do it with more than one income source so rather than just a replacement job can you make passive incomes as well so less needed in different places but all equaling the amount of money you need and I want to really stress as well hopefully my channel gives you an inspiration and the starting point you know our family is definitely in the mind frame that we can achieve anything and money is a tool for it we do things differently to a lot of people and a lot of people also are sometimes questioned or triggered by things that I talk about about giving and saving investing but that's good the whole point is for you to ask better questions and decide what's right for your personal finances it's not for someone else to say that that's the only solution they can help but what is important to you and also the vision that you have for your life and you know, we look at communities, the debt-free community and FIRE, and yes, there's a lot of fantastic qualities, but there's also some habits that maybe don't lead to the best relationship and the best journey with money. I see a lot of people who talk about the FIRE movement, and particularly when they've achieved it, they actually are still working. They're still doing a job in some way because they may be teaching you or doing other things or talking about it to other people. They're still getting rewarded with money for some of the gifts and talents or services. They're not actually giving away their time for free anymore and doing whatever they please in most cases anyway they're usually still working so if we're looking to these people and saying well this is a model i want to copy but are they actually doing that end goal that they're teaching us about? So when we talk about the purpose of money, I believe in these four pillars of money. I believe you should be spending, you should be saving, you should be investing in your time, freedom and flexibility, and then you should be giving. And that's really because I don't believe that money is unlimited. And when I put into practice all four of those pillars, including giving away money to things that we believe in, charities and causes, where our money can then be multiplied, it can then involve other people necessarily that we can't give up our time to do that's when i have actually seen our wealth skyrocket because i've not been afraid to put my money out into different places to invest in the stock market to save it for our goals to allow lifestyle changes like my husband no longer being in the corporate world and also our family will change again this year as a result so I know that you can actually do all four of those pillars regardless of your budget. Remember, it's never about how much you earn. It's all about what you do with it. So even if you have the intentions, well, Jennifer, I do want to invest. I do want to save. I do want to give. I just can't find any wiggle room in my spending at all. Well, create these pockets within your budget and place even 50 pence or a pound or something in there showing that you want to build up those habits. Because like anything, if you don't don't work out those habits how are you going to get strong and confident in them this area is also really important when we think about purpose also thinking about a legacy what do you want to leave for your family for your children's future for people around you that love you but also so that you're improving the lives around you right now and in the future with your money it could be well I want to set up you know children I says for my children to benefit for perhaps even put money aside for education or first homes or new cars start to think of all the purposes for your money to better your life and those around us so the fifth and final question is all to do with investments. And every year, I challenge you to ask yourself this question. When we're talking about investments, are you cash flow investing or are you focused on growth investing? So there are two very different ways of actually creating time freedom. The traditional way of growth investing is when we think of the FIRE movement. Growth is all about, I'm going to save, I'm going to invest continually, I'm not going to touch the money, but that's eventually going to grow in size that then I can withdraw a salary, if you like. I'm going to sell off some stocks and shares every single year and live off them. That is growth investing. The object is never to touch it, but only dip in when you truly want a wage from it. The flip side is cash flow investing. Now, a key thing here is, yes, you can have a combination of both. We do that in our own family, but it's deciding which one is right for right now. When we think of cash flow investing, you might have heard of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a very famous book. And it's all to do with what investments can I buy into that give me cash flow right now? So growth investing is all about cash flow in the future, a pension, investment ISA, perhaps when you're actually buying stocks, you're putting away long term, that's what that bucket is. 
but that doesn't help you create passive income right now. And that could be cash flow investments or dividend payments when you buy stocks and shares. It can be in property. It can be in your own business. That is cash flow. You're creating cash flow yourself. It can be in other companies where you're an angel investor or joint ventures. Now, our family very much at the start was focused on growth investing. However, as time went on, we are now flipping that we are looking at a combination of both and if not more so towards cash flow investing. So our setup has always been that investing is very important and that's why I'm saying this is very fluid. You have to really think about, okay, I'm at this part of my investment journey. I maybe have this particular goal where I do want it as an income source, another income source in our life, but what's more important? And you see, when you have cash flow, then you have choice. That's what ultimately the growth investments is for. It's giving you cash flow in the future. But are there ways to actually invest to give you cash flow as well right now? So look at how you're investing. Which of the buckets do you fall under? And I'm going to challenge you in 2021 because people have the same security that we used to have taken away from them with their jobs. Perhaps you've only got your day job. If you're looking for security, we need to create it now in our own life. And that is all by creating cash flow right now. And I'm gonna challenge you just the same way with our family. We are creating multiple cash flow investments right now as our focus as well as growth. So it could well be you look into dividend investing, maybe think about other companies or friends and families that you believe in that they could do really well. Keep your eyes, keep your mind open, because I do believe when you decide what's important, opportunities present themselves. So be on the lookout, decide what's important for you right now, what you believe you need in your life to then support the next level as we go into the year ahead. So thank you so much for watching today's video and I really do hope these five life-changing questions are making you think a little bit differently about your money. I would especially love in the comments if you would let me know which of these questions has really touched your heart today. Which one are you particularly keen to explore with yourself or your loved ones as you carry forward into the year ahead? And I do wish you all the success with your money. You do know you've got me in this channel, so do check out my video regularly. I cover everything to do with personal finance, investing, and in particular, giving you the tools with your money. If you're interested in having a side hustle, I've been there and I'm doing that. And you can certainly watch my progress as we do as a family. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.